Hello, this is Kelly Kleiman, and you are listening to the DealershipNews.com podcast, where we spotlight the who's happening in the automotive industry. It's foot soldiers, visionaries, salesmen, GMs, owners, service managers, and industry vendors alike. Our guests today are the forces behind a company car dealers really need to know about. They specialize in a set of services that can have a substantial impact on the overall success of any car dealership, and they are here today to talk about it. I'd like to welcome Diego Martinez and Liz Cardenas of Easy as One, Two, Three. Hi, guys. How's it going? It is Thank you. a pleasure. Thank you for coming on board. Now, it's the first question I ask virtually every guest, and we love finding out how the heck you all got into the automotive industry. Was it something you've always loved, or did the door of opportunity just sort of open for you at a car dealership, and there you were? What got you into it? Uh, you know what? I got injured one day, and that's how I got into uh, car sales uh, about 20 years ago and started as a salesman at uh, a local GNC Pontiac Oldsmobile dealership. And then ever since. You said you got injured? I got injured uh, at my other job. I used to be a heavy equipment operator. Oh, Lord. So I couldn't operate uh, equipment anymore. So I had to find a different career. And I saw this ad. It was kind of funny because back in the days, it was a little fat guy running down <laughs> with a suitcase and money falling out of the suitcase. Said, hey, you sell 10 cars, you can make X amount of money. I'm like, shit, I can do that. So here I am. <laughs> <laughs> it's been working ever since. That's great to hear. How about you, Liz? What what happened with you? Well, actually, I worked for a bank for almost 10 years, and then I stopped working to take care of my folks. So when it was time to go back to work, um, the bank felt I was out of the bank industry too long, mm. so it was hard to get a job. And then I answered an ad for an Internet manager, and I accepted it. And within a couple of weeks, we opened a call center, and they put me on salary, and I had a staff of 12 uh, under me. So I started running their BDC department for a few years. Oh, fantastic. That's how I got into it. And we're going to get into that call center business here in a minute. Now, if you had a 30-second elevator pitch, uh, let's say you're trapped on the 20th floor of the dealership news building in Miami Beach with a, the owner of a large uh, automotive group, what would that 30-second elevator pitch sound like? It, it's simple. You want to make more money, uh, lower your overhead, give easy as one, two, three a shot. We have a call center. We have experienced people making all the phone calls for you. Every one of your guests gets called on. We don't nitpick. We don't choose. We call everybody. That in itself will bring in more revenue. If we could just pick up one car deal at an average of $3,000 uh, a month, there's 3000 more than you have. That barely covers our costs. Do you imagine if I could actually make the same thing every day and get you 10 to 20 appointments a week? How much more money can you make? And leaving your sales staff available to do what they need to do, which is sell cars and make more money. Well, you know, I mean, that that's actually an outstanding 30-second elevator pitch. It might be one of the best ones that we've heard here, quite frankly. Usually our 30-second elevator pitches go to about a minute and a half or two minutes. So, you know, uh, outstanding. Well, let's, 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 let's talk about some of the biggest issues that you see facing car dealers today. And you mentioned call center. We're going to get into that here shortly. But when you walk into a dealer, um, what questions do you ask them in order to properly assess their needs? Well, the first thing you do is you walk into a dealership, and one thing that we have lost, we have order takers now. We really don't have salespeople. And a lot of owners and a lot of uh, GMs, GSMs who've been around the block understand what I'm talking about. Uh, you walk into a car dealership right now, and uh, a lot of them like to go to an up system. A lot of them don't even up you. Uh, or you have the crazy huddle sitting up front. Uh, it's funny, you walk into a dealership, you don't need to get a proper meet and greet anymore. We understand that it's all digital and people come in on a digital, but I don't care where you go or what you shop on. You want somebody when you meet somebody to welcome you to their dealership, yeah. introduce themselves and find out what your wants and needs are. Uh, <clears throat> I believe in the last five to 10 years, the auto industry has lost that. We have depended so much on digital and how low our prices can be. I am a still a firm believer that people buy, buy value. I don't care if you're the cheapest price in town. People will not buy if you don't show them the value for what they're paying. So it's back to the same old thing. We don't reinvent the wheel in the car business. We just relive it. It is going back to doing value. So once you get to a car dealership, you walk around the dealership for a little bit, you get to see what kind of experience you get from their sales staff. So then you know which way to pitch. Um, you know, I was out at a dealership for 30 minutes. Not one person comes out and says hello to me. I walk in the showroom. Uh, I asked somebody where the restroom was, and they didn't have a problem pointing. What happened to walking the guests over to the bathroom? 
and showing them where they're at, getting to know them, just building a small portion of report. I believe that our work ethics and our work habits have gone out the window. So that's the first line of business that we need to address is how people address us, not only online but in person. I was just going to say, you walk in there and you're almost immediately assessing their culture. I, I totally agree with you. I've noticed some of the same uh, same problems that uh, that you're that you're uh, explaining to us here right now. It's an issue. It's definitely an issue. How about making the phone call and it just goes to a message, right? That's a that's a big issue. Uh, you know, that, that's the hardest thing at a dealership when you call and you have twenty different places. Or dial one for here, dial two for here, dial three for there. It sounds and it, when it first came out, it sounded like a great way to show that we were professional. But in the reality, there's nothing better than a light voice picking up the phone and say, "Thank you for calling ABC Motors. Uh, this is Rebecca. How might I direct your call?" Yeah. How about the worst part is that when you try to get a hold of a sales manager and you call them ten times, ten times you go to the voicemail and they don't even call you back. Our training has gone way size from where I came in the car business to where it's at today. And that goes all the way from managers all the way to sales staff because all of a sudden we worry about what's the lowest price, how can I get this deal, instead of worrying about customer wants and needs and doing the customer relationship that we have lost. Let's go over some of your calls. Well, you have uh, several services that you offer. Why don't you go over a brief outline of what those services are and then let's go into the call center capabilities i've got a question regarding that and several others so if uh, you're walking in say mr car dealer this is what we have over at easy as one two three one one of the basic things that we have that everybody knows about is now is digital broadcasting we do uh digital we do a lot of digital marketing for car dealerships such as their banners we do email blasts for them we also make sure that if they're in our Internet leads come in that we stop the clock by a proper response with a human live person doing a response. Digital is very important in today's market. I don't care who you are, where you're at, and I come from the newspapers and television and radio ads, but I also had to develop that uh, 98% of our people go online before they come to the dealership. So how you present the ad, what's in the ad, what's the best way to get uh, the best for your money on what you just uh, send out there. So our services start with digital. We, we do a full digital uh, marketing system for them. We do a weekly broadcast for them. We have our own in-house graphic designer. Our turnaround time is within uh, 24 to 48 hours at the most, and that's after all the changes. We actually understand compliances from different manufacturers, so we, tr- we do our best to be in compliance the first round around, even though there's always one or two things that we have to adjust. The more communication that we get from the dealer, the better it is and the easier it is for us to get it right the first time. But our goal is to have a digital marketing strategy or broadcast our newsletter or whatever we're sending out in front of the dealer within 12 hours and out in the public within 24 hours. Uh, We also offer websites. Anything that has to do with digital marketing, we take care of, such as social media. Social media is such a big uh, part of everything nowadays. So we do help you advertise and we do help you answer your social media. We do have a sticker that we put on every place that we go that says, check in on Facebook. The reason you want people to check in on Facebook is because the more activity you get, the more Google recognizes you. So, And the more interaction you get with people, the more comments, the uh, more that uh, Facebook will run your ads. So the idea is to get interaction from your clients, from people that work with you. Pictures always have worked. You always ask permission for the salespeople to ask their clients to take pictures because that's the best part of social media that you're ever going to have is the part where your clients are getting involved in it and they're sharing it. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't c- concur with you more. I've seen that on Instagram as well uh, where the salesman will post a picture with the happy customer and it goes quite a ways actually. It, the engagement levels are pretty high with that. Well, let's, let's go over your call center capabilities. We know that car dealers miss calls for a number of reasons and that means misleads and obviously drop sales, but how does your company address those relatively serious issues regarding call center? As a solution? Uh, see, we call them, uh, we, you, you guys call them issues. With us, it's just our daily work. We come in, we have a staff of 10, sales, 10 phone operators who go through each account that we have and call every single person. The beautiful thing about the internet is if you've ever worked at a car dealership, if you understand what I'm talking about here is if you go into your call log today and if you're a GM, GSM right now and you're listening to this, I, I encourage you to do this. Go into your CRM. Go in there and look from a lead. Where are we at? Today we're at the 22nd of the month, right? Go back to the first of the month. 
And I guarantee you, you're going to find 10, 12 leads that nobody's talked to after three days. They dropped them. I encourage you to pick up the phone and call those people. Five out of those are going to be in, in the market still. And the other five will tell you that they went and bought somewhere else because they didn't get the proper response. Our job is to make sure that those calls don't fall through the loop. We go in and we call everybody, we uh, email everybody, and we get a hold of everybody. Now, let's forget about that. When was the last time that everybody made sure that 100% of your guests that walked into the door got uh, put in the CRM? Because that doesn't happen. You don't know, you, you put them in the CRM when you go on a test drive, when you do this, or when you're working a deal. How about logging everybody in and letting us follow up and calling everybody who was there yesterday and finding out what happened today? The one thing you're getting from us is you're getting a true fact of exactly what happened. Which salesman needs help? Which salesman doesn't do follow-up? We can look at a CRM and within a couple of hours tell you which salesmen are doing their follow-up and which ones aren't. If you're like me, you can look at the board at, at the dealership and find out who's making the phone calls or not because you know how many units they got out. We got into an industry where we think 10 cars is good. I remember when 10 cars got you kicked out of a dealership. If you weren't a 20-car guy or better, you didn't have a job. But now we're, we're okay with mediocre salespeople because we don't take the time to train them. We don't take the time to train them. We don't take the time to show them how to do the, a proper follow-up. And the truth is our sales managers these days are so busy doing three or four different jobs than what they used to have to do when I was on sales. So you need somebody to go in there and help train your sales staff, help keep them uh, accountable for what they're doing. And that's what we do. We don't just keep them accountable for their phone calls, but we give you a, a monthly log on what kind of activity that salesperson has done because we can see all that through the CRM. Technology has helped us with that. The only thing technology has hurt us is that they forget that we need to train these people. We need the basics, the meet and greet, the building report, the selecting the right vehicle. They're going on a test drive and letting these people know and feel the car. Well, how about the ether? I know I saw that on the Internet. I know I got the best price, but let me show you why. And forget about price because price isn't important. You've got to remember that. If price was important, nobody would be at Starbucks at 6 o'clock in the morning getting a $5 cup of coffee. There's value. We have got to go back to building value in these vehicles because then you can upsell. Then you can uh, sell the value of your back end. Our back end should be about uh, $2,300 average. I know dealerships that won't even employ you if you can't hold that. Because that's where the money's at these days. We all understand that. But how do you get there? You set it up from the meet and greet from the sales staff. You set it up from the sales staff, and that's how you keep it going. Because if the sales staff, if they like you, trust you, and believe you, they're going to like and trust your finance manager or your business manager, whatever title we want to call them today. The reality is a car dealership's a profit center, and we have let that go wayside. And yeah. that's why a lot of good sales staff have left the industry. It's time to bring it back and build value and build a little bit of pleasure in what we do for a living every day. You, you get That's my, how I feel about the car business. You, you, you get my vote, and um, I appreciate your, your insight. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about the, the call center because other than somebody walking into a dealership, the phone call is perhaps the most potent and uh, strong lead that you could possibly get. Uh is it bilingual? And then does it also take overflow calls? Because like I said, I've called dealerships for a number of different reasons. Obviously, we interview quite a few of them. And uh, I either get the, 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 the menu or nobody picks up the phone at all and asks me to leave a message. Uh, so how do they deal with over, overflow as far as that's concerned? And, and do you have live operators to handle that? Or is it mostly just getting back on the phone and, and, and providing some attention to those people who, whose calls fell through the uh, cracks? The beautiful thing about our company is that we can cut to what the dealership needs. If a dealership says, hey, you know what, I don't have a receptionist until 10 o'clock in the morning, they can forward the phone calls to our office and we can take live phone calls any given time, day or night. We're open seven days a week. I know people on the East Coast are closed on Sundays. Well, Sunday when you're closed, we're still working for you. We're still making the follow-up calls. We're still uh, answering your Internet leads to stop the clock to make sure that your client gets a first response from a human person. So one of the beautiful things about our call center is that we're open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and we have the ability to go ahead and take your live calls and call forward. You let us know, hey, we're going to forward you the calls. We're going to take them. We're going to answer them, and we're going to either uh, – send you an email with what needs to be handled, or we're going to transfer them to the right department because we have the capability of doing all that. 
uh, there's nothing worse than having the phone ring and nobody answering it. It used to be, you know what, you're making money if nobody's answering the phone because it sounds like you're busy. Well, guess what? These days when you don't answer the phone, somebody else will. And our job is to make sure that we're the first to answer the phone for you and get you that appointment that you need today. Now, we're talking about call sales. We also do the call center for your CSI. We also do the call center for your uh, service department. We're capable of doing the phone calls throughout your whole uh, dealership and making sure that your service guests got the best experience that they needed, making sure there's something wrong that we address the problem and we get it over to the right person at your dealership before the client goes in compliance, before the client goes on social media and blows everything up. So to answer your question, we are very flexible. We can custom tailor any of our services to any dealership that needs uh, specifications. Uh, we also do training. We go into the dealership and we'll help you train your BDC room. We'll set it up for you. And then we will uh, help you monitor them month to month basis with that. So there's a lot of flexibility on what we can do. Um, I've been a salesperson, a finance manager, a used car manager, a GSM, a finance director, a special finance manager, a GM. So we can go in there and even train your sales staff to be able to perform this. A lot of people say, how do you get more money out of the back end? How about selling value? How about slowing down? How about stop being a pencil pusher and actually take the time to get to know your guests and their needs? Today's profitability is set on the back end. The front end has to be able to help you get it. But it also does with service and parts. So our call center will direct all those areas to make sure that we get the most out of all your guests who have been in your dealership. Let's let's talk about another area that Easy as One Two Three specializes in, and you've touched on it a couple times in in broadcasting emails. Good email marketing can be very successful for car dealers. We know that. So, talk to us about the importance of a robust email marketing campaign and how you guys approach it. You know, the best thing about an email campaign and the way we approach it is freshly every week. We don't send out the same broadcast over and over again. Uh, one of the biggest problems that dealerships face today is aging inventory. Why? Because the prices are so competitive that the only way you're going to get out and sell that old age vehicle is with price. Well, how do your guests know that you have that vehicle? How do the other markets know that you have that vehicle? We, we all use the uh, traditional cars.com, true cars. Um, the auto does a great job helping us price stuff, but it's not getting in front of your guests. So just because I send you an email today doesn't mean you're in the market today. But if I send you one next week, or next month, you might be in the market. So our, our strategy is to take your old age inventory or what you have going on now and blasting that out to the thousands of clients that you have in your database. And, and that's how we address it. We address it fresh with a fresh set of eyes and not repeating the same message all the time. It's not always about price. Sometimes there might be a discount on your oil change to get the people into service. Because once we get them into service, we have them in the dealership. If our sales staff's trained right, they're going to take that email blast that I sent to service clients and bring them up front and show them a brand new uh, Ford Focus, uh, Chevy Cruze, mm -hmm. Nissan Altima, or whatever you have on your lot that those people are currently driving. 98% mm -hmm. of the people that walk in our service department will buy another car from us because they already like us, trust us, and believe us. We just have to go and do the legwork to get them back. Our job as easy as one, two, three is to get them into your dealership. With the email uh, broadcast, with the email blast, is advertising something to get them back into your dealership. Once we get them in there, it's the dealership's job to flip them, get them into a different car, get them on a test drive, or upsell them something in service. So we take a logical look at how we're going to get the best of our clients back into your dealership by assessing their needs. Well, I love how you specifically mention email campaigns for service departments. Which campaigns have been the most successful for you, and what kind of service department specials seem to be working the best across the board? You know, the ones that seem to work the best is when, you, um, when you're doing an oil change and you're open for lunch. I don't know what it is with yeah. car dealerships these days, but everybody wants to close down and close your service department for lunch. A lot of it is because a lot of uh, the service departments are running skeleton crews. Mm. All makes and models. It doesn't matter if you're a Ford dealership, Chevy dealership, Dodge dealership. We can change oil on any car that it's available. So one of our biggest things is uh, a quick loop, fast and easy, get in and out during your lunch hour. We'll shuttle you to lunch and bring you back and pick you up, and your car will be ready to go. That seems to be one of our best service ads that have gone out and uh, draw the most people. If you're a working person and you don't work in a car dealership, when do you get your oil change? Usually what, when you get off work, when you're going home, or is it on the weekend? We try to make uh, 
when a service department is open at lunchtime, it makes it convenient for a doctor, a lawyer, or somebody who has lunch in a specific time, a banker, that they can go drop off their car, go to lunch, come back, and uh, move forward. One of the dealerships that we did a broadcast for service has a deli in there. So they offered an oil change for X amount plus a, a deli sandwich. Hmm. Now you're getting lunch and changing your oil for the same price. You're not, you're not wasting any time. It's actually helping you accommodate your lunch hour. So there's different uh, programs, again, depending on what the dealership is doing and what uh, they've been working that's focusing on them. So a lot of it is convenience to your client convenient to the guests of walking through our dealership. You know, I like that. I, I like that a lot. I, I appreciate a dealership that does take my the, the importance of my time into consideration. I haven't seen a lot of that, quite frankly, I and I think that's that, that would be a great approach. Uh, what sets you guys apart from your competitors? I mean, you've mentioned a lot of it. I, I hear a lot of really good things, and I'm going to address that in my closing comments. But um, you know, you, you've, you've had an experience in virtually every level of, of a car dealership. So you've got this great experience and, and you're passionate about it. But there's got to be a couple other things that set you guys apart from your competitors, and we want to hear what those are. You know, one of the best things that sets us apart from our competitors is, first of all, we have firsthand knowledge of auto industry from start to finish. You've been there. Uh, in the sales and service parts, I have all the experience that you can ask for. Mm -hmm. In the BDC room, I have Liz who has 10 to 11 years of BDC experience. So you're not getting somebody who thought of an idea and said, hey, I can sell this. I can actually go behind your desk, sell a car, get it financed. And that's what we do. We go into a car dealership, and if you need help in the management staff, we can go in there and do it. In California, we have California sales license. In other states that so you don't need them, we can walk in there, sit behind a desk, and know what we're doing and help you make profit. So that sets us apart from most anybody out there trying to do this in the market. We actually know what it is. We're not elites who's making phone calls because they own your CRM. <laughs> uh, we are actually people that have been in the car business who understands our customers and our guests that walk in. So what you're getting from us is a guy that is tomorrow a car dealership, and this happened to me in one of our local Ford dealerships here. They said, hey, my sales manager called in sick. Do you have anybody to come in? I said, yeah, I'll be there in 20 minutes. So guess what? I got suited up. I went to work. We sold five cars that day, and we kept making profit till the sales manager got better, or till they actually replaced the gentleman that was that kept calling them sick. The problem these days is that uh, a lot of the sales managers believe that there there's nobody else that could do their job until you bring somebody else. That really, I have no no uh, no stake whether they keep the person or not because I don't care. My job is to make sure that the dealership gets the best service that they need at that moment. So that sets us apart from everybody. If you need an F&I manager, I can hop in there and wing a deal, just like the best of them. So with us, you're getting the experience and you're getting the best staff that you need. We also help you hire the right sales staff, and we train them for you. How many of your other competitors are making phone calls for you can say that? Yeah. So Not we're, a we're at one, one stop shop for just about anything that you need. Where are you guys going to be in three years? You're looking in your crystal ball, and I want a forecast. <laughs> You know what, in three years, I'm hoping that we're at about 50 uh, dealerships helping uh, nationwide mm -hmm. and uh, moving forward and growing this company. Right now, we're a staff of 12. I'd like to triple that in the next three years. Uh, add more call centers, helping more dealerships. I'd like to be more involved in the day-to-day -day operations with some of the dealerships and our partners that we have right now so that we can help their business grow. Because the more they grow, the more they stay with us. And we understand that. So our forecast for the next three years will be triple that on about 50 units, uh, 50 dealerships as our partners on just the BDC portion of it. Mm -hmm. And about another 75 on just the digital part that we do. Because our menu is a la carte. We could do it. We could just do the digital. We could just do the BDC room. Or we could do a whole complete package for you. Outstanding. Diego, I want to thank you so much for joining us, folks. That's Mr. Diego Martinez and Liz Cardenas as well. Easy as one, two, three. Comprehensive best practices solutions for dealerships. They have the passion, they have the solutions, and they have the experience to back it up. I highly recommend you take a look at them. If you want to succeed, they're going to help you along that, along that road. Kelly Kleiman here, dealershipnews.com. You've listened to the podcast. You're going to play it back in your free time and get educated. That's what we're all about. We'll talk to you soon. Diego, Liz, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Thank you.